abuse and ungrateful. The victims are concentrated and pissed, okay? And that's what's driving this thing in both parties. Um, I think the difference, though, is you said two things. You said the border and you said trade. And I think that shows a little bit of the difference. Mm -hmm. um, when you guys talk about trade, I love it. You guys talk about NAFTA, I love it. You guys talk about the, you know, selling American workers down, I love it. It's like a warm, nutritious bowl of carrots and soup. And then you put in the anti-immigrant poop. And then I can't eat it because I don't agree about the anti-immigrant poop. Well, that's what I think is the big... It's been both parties saying, saying that to voters. And I mean, that's what Bernie Sanders used to say. We need to protect American jobs. That's what Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson used to stand and protest at the border, whose jobs are being taken. Um, Cesar Chavez, he was the one who originated the phrase wetbacks to protect um, the Hispanics who already lived here. Okay, boo Caesar Chavez, or you boo a fact. Um, and the, as soon as Bernie started running for president, I would have agreed with him, I mean, if Trump hadn't come along, on trade and on immigration, because he wanted to protect American jobs um, for the working class. And then as soon as he runs for office as a Democrat, and this is often what happens with both parties, well, okay, sorry, now you have to go speak to La Raza, and now you're for open borders. And that's exactly what happened two weeks after he announced. He spoke to La Raza, changed his position 100, 180 degrees. I think you see a lot of the same thing with Elizabeth Warren. If I listen to her rhetoric, her anti-Wall Street rhetoric, I am second to none in being, you know, anti the bankers and Wall Street and plutocrats who really don't care about ordinary people. There has been a division of, of, of the haves and the have-nots like we have not seen in history before, and that is globalism. But as soon as you start running with one of those parties, you have to toe the line and suck up to Wall Street. So let's talk about globalism, right? You mentioned Brexit briefly. I'd be interested in both of your kind of opinions. If you think what happened in England is going to potentially come over here, or if you think it could manifest itself um, differently here. I think it already has. Yeah, you see it here. <laughs> Donald Trump got more votes than any Republican in history, and that is with the entire establishment denouncing him. This isn't how it's done, and um, no, you can't talk about these things. I mean, it really is amazing that it wasn't just the Democratic Party. It wasn't just the Republican Party. It was also the entire media. It's also the entire donor class all telling him he can't talk about this stuff. And he wins more votes than any Republican in primary history. Hey, you know, yeah, I think for me the immigration stuff is very painful um, because I think I know this is not an abstract conversation for me. Uh, I'm very close to folks who are immigrants, who come from immigrant families, immigrant neighborhoods. I did a lot of my work uh, in Oakland in the Bay Area. I'm very close to a bunch of Muslims. And so for me, it's been very, very difficult this year. Um, first of all, there's just been this complete uh, erasure of, of, of even their most recent history. Um, you said we've done nothing on the border. Um, you know, au contraire. In fact, if you talk to the Latino community, they call President Obama the deporter in chief. And the reason they do that is because President Obama, trying to show Republicans that he could be tough on the border, trying to get a deal done, deported more people than any president has ever done, put more personnel and technology on the border than anyone has ever done. We had a net negative immigration now from Mexico, more Mexicans leaving than coming, and it still wasn't enough. The reason that the president then turns around and says, well, I have to I use executive action to go against my own base, outrage my own base, destroy families in my own base, trying to show you that we could, could cut a deal, now I'm going to use executive power to do something to try to make it a little bit better. But we can't even share facts. This is the first choose your news election. You pick your filter, your filter gives you your facts, and we can't even agree on the basics. It is not true that we have an open border. It is not true the president hasn't done anything. The problem is he got left at the altar when he did. I mean, speaking of this 
immigration obviously was big this week with what happened with the Supreme Court. It was a huge blow to Obama's uh, executive action uh, policies, effectively blocking the programs for the rest of his uh, time in office. What is your reaction to that ruling? Were you surprised by it? And what impact do you think it was going to have here in the election? Um, I think it will probably help Donald Trump. I mean, the Brexit election, it wasn't about it, it wasn't about the trade deals. They can make the trade deals they want to make. Brexit was about immigration. Trump is about immigration. And it's not about not liking immigrants. Nobody's out immigranting me, especially with the Muslims. Uh, the point is, they are, these are people who are already here. It isn't liking Muslims or liking Hispanics. It's do we take care of the people who already live here? And, and bringing in more and more immigrants, and um, no, he is not the deporter in chief. I know this is very big at the Huffington Post. What they did is they redefined what counts as a deportation. Um, up until Obama, a deportation meant you were in the country, they caught you and deported you. Obama started counting, turning them away at the border. Well, okay, this is like changing the grade. A passing grade is now going to be 40 instead of 70. And look at all the kids who have passed. Um, so they changed the definition of deportation. Um, look, the immigrants who are already here are going to be a big part of the vote for Trump. They are the ones whose wages are being driven down. It's not you. It's not me. Um, it's probably not a lot of people in this audience. No, to the contrary, you're very happy because you get such cheap mates. Um, and they're so docile. Uh, and you have your chef. And you, even in LA, you have pool boys, even if you don't have a pool. No, this idea that you are the ones who are speaking for low wage workers is preposterous. These low wage workers would like a little less competition for their jobs. It is stunning how the very rich have gotten so much richer, so much richer, and wages, especially for the working class, have been flat for 20 years. Well, they'd like their wages to go up. If we're going to bring in more immigrants, I want them competing with senators, congressmen, journalists, TV pundits, lawyers, not competing with, you know, the guy who does your landscaping. This idea that, you know, you get to bring in all these poor people um, doing low-wage work. Yeah, it's good for them, and it's good for the rich people who hire them. <laughs> but don't strut around like you're Martin Luther King. This is good for you. It's bad for your mate. Um, so, fa the facts. I'll just try to hang out with the facts. Um, <laughs> Uh, you said that the uh, immigrant existing, uh, I guess, Latino community is going to be the one that stands with Trump because he's so tough on their cousins and their friends. I, this particular, if that were true, I would be very, very worried because I would feel that maybe somehow um, uh, I was overreacting to what strikes me as racial hostility to this particular immigrant group. But here's reality. Something very interesting is happening with the Latino community. The Latino community used to be a fiction. Let's be very clear. If you look at this, the polls in, say, 1989, 1990, you ask people that we now call Latinos, do you think of yourself as a Latino, and do you think you have anything in common with other people who are quote unquote Latino? Only 20% of people said yes. Why? They said, I'm not a Latino. I'm a Mexican. I'm a Puerto Rican. I'm a Dominican. I'm a Guatemalan. I'm a, what is this Latino? I said, no, I have nothing in common with those people at all. That's, that's how they felt. What has happened is that people who I think speak in a way that is so loose, I'm just being as kind as I can be, as so, that's so loose, it sounds like they're saying, I'm not saying they're saying this, but when you talk about people that you don't talk to, let's say that again, when you talk about communities you don't talk to, then you wind up making mistakes. And one mistake that gets made by the Republicans, which I appreciate them for doing, I hope they keep doing it, 
is that they sound like they're saying something like this. All Latinos are Mexicans. All Mexicans are immigrants. Most immigrants are illegal or undocumented. And most of them are rapists and horrible people. But now that's not what they mean to say. But when you talk about people that you don't talk to and you don't course correct for the reaction, now what's happened is more than 50% of Latinos say, guess what? We are a community now. They have been pushed into this identity. Democrats could not do this. We're not competent enough. Democrats are not good enough. This is not PC. We tried with the PC thing to utterly fail. They had nothing to do with it. But what happened is this level of antipathy and tone deafness has created now a massive political constituency. You say the immigrants are going to come his way. Right now, the Cubans, not far left, not far leftist as a community, the Cubans are 82 percent against Trump. The Cubans, the Mexicans are 90, 91 percent against Trump. Either. Either all of them are mishearing you, or somebody is saying something horribly offensive, and you're creating a thing that you actually don't want to create. First of all, you claim that I'm not talking to these people who go around calling themselves Hispanics. No, I think that's mostly social justice warriors. I do talk to Cubans, Colombians, Dominicans, and Puerto Ricans. And the idea that they do not see themselves as Cubans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, and so on is absurd. My argument is not that um, suddenly all of these groups are going to vote for Donald Trump. It's that you are not helping them. Um, you claim you're speaking for them, but in fact, you're speaking for yourself as the overlord of, of the more and more cheap labor coming in, coming in, coming in. Um, the vote isn't going to go, I think um, Donald Trump will get the same percentage of the Hispanic vote that, oh, that's right, every Republican always gets. It's 30 percent. It doesn't matter if you're George Bush, John McCain, Mitt Romney, Jan Brewer, it's about 30 percent. Now you'll have all of the... Um, the people who don't think of themselves as Colombians, Mexicans, Cubans, but Hispanics, La Raza, La Raza founded by white people, by the way, um, um, with money from the Ford Foundation. Um, they'll be ginning up the social justice warriors, so you may not get more of the Hispanic vote. I think Donald Trump absolutely